Make sure you use the hashtags up here. Use the hashtags. See the scrolls on the computers. We have a better uh, opportunity to hit on uh, on those. If we use the hashtags, that's how they pull them out. Want to answer? I want to go. But I'll answer it for you. <laughs> All right. So our rev up class is coming up. Uh, tomorrow is module 12, close and sell, creating class. Mark hey. Jeff is the instructor on that. And then next week uh, on Wednesday is uh, uh, module number one. That's That will be live in the Summerlin office. And then on Monday, I messed up. This is supposed to be Monday, four to six. And Emily's the instructor on that one. That will be on Zoom. And then next Wednesday, we'll be live in the Summerlin office. Uh, and then uh, next Friday is the Savaging Brand and Coke in your farm. And that's also live in the Summerlin office. And Tim will be the instructor on that one as well. There's uh, my license information for use, for use, for use that are writing contracts. I'm just learning how to talk. All right. So. Who signed up, Rizal? I know you have. I've got them checked by itself. Yes. So cool, yes. isn't it? Yeah. 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 So if you haven't signed up, Rizal, and you want to, it's really easy. There's flyers over there, these very flyers. If your uh, bank already has Zell, like some of the big banks have Zell, you just scan that and it's like a, a, a two minute process. If your bank doesn't have Zell, it doesn't mean you can't do it. You just need to download the uh, app from uh, Zelle, and you can still get it. Now the problem is that, um, that uh, they only go up to $50,000 at a time. Darn. Yeah. Oh, that is not enough. <laughs> so if you have big checks, then, then uh, it, <laughs> I still sell. It, it will take more than, you know, you know, more than one time, more than one sell. Yes, okay. All right, 
We have a blood drive coming up. What's that? Have you signed up? There's a lot of horrible problems. Yeah, that, that one. That's a problem I want all of you to have. Although I love signing those big checks. A blood drive coming up next month, uh, October 10th. It's a Monday, and um, I always every two, we're doing this quarterly here in the office now, and uh, I always get blood. So it's a it's a big need out there, and they're always calling me. Hey, we need your blood. We need your blood. I guess I have a desire for blood. Um, every Friday we do wear your favorite <coughs> sports team jersey. Tomorrow I will be wearing, what am I wearing tomorrow? Yeah. So the problem is I moved all my clothes over into the new house already. Mm -hmm. So um, I think I left the angel jersey, so I'll be wearing the angel jersey. Mm -hmm. Last Friday of every month is our happy hour, and it's uh, September 30th. What is that, a couple weeks away? Two weeks from tomorrow is our happy hour, and we always have a lot of fun. It's been a couple of months since we've actually had the happy hour um, in the office because last month we had the uh, the bowling, which was a whole lot of fun. Wasn't that fun? Yes. Yeah. We need to do that again, don't we? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I wish we could find a bowling alley. We need to do dodgeball. Dodgeball? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, is, that, is, that, is that where you just put me in the middle and you just put me in the middle? There you go. Frank, no. Frank has no mercy. What was that? He was already practicing his. <laughs> All right, so vote uh, Realty One Group, Best of Las Vegas. You can vote every single day. Um, and there's a lot of our agents in there as well. I don't have the list here. But vote for Realty One and vote for Rock Title again. You can vote every day up to September 22nd, so that's next Thursday. Um, you can vote every day and on every device. So if you have uh, two different cell phones, you can vote there. If you have four different uh, computers, you can vote you know, four different times there, and every day. So um, let's get the vote out. Rock tile number one, right? And uh, Realty One Group, so let's all uh, vote. What else we have? Oh, Charlie, what's going on in the lending world? Hi, everyone. Other than uh, confirming loans uh, being raised up to 715, uh, I don't have anything to say. But if you have any questions, let me know how we can help uh, you guys to improve your business and my business. You all have to, I think, uh, brainstorm and come up with new ideas. And uh, I, I just want to let you know I'm still willing to do open houses. Uh, I will come and stay there. And I got a client from Macrina's open house. And I'm working on her pre-approval right now. Even though she's not, uh, you know, uh, motivated right now, she's waiting prices to go down, further down. So there are buyers that are getting ready now, you know. So reach out to the buyers that you were working on back in the day, January, February, that they couldn't qualify. So reach out to them, and they are getting excited now. Maybe they will find a property that seller is giving uh, seller contributions. So I'm doing that right now. I'm digging out my whole pipeline and getting the uh, buyers that are pre-qualified, you know, for that price. But right now, they are excited because they think that they can get a house. So reach out to the previous uh, buyers, potential buyers, and just let me know. Even if I can help you with anything, any questions, you, they don't have to do the loan with me. I'm here to help you guys. We are a team. We are a family. We are one family. I'm here to help. I, just a reminder. OK? Right. Thank you. Make sure you take the time. You know, even if you're not turning your buyers over to her, um, she's a great resource, so use her as a resource, and you'll find out how uh, amazing she is, and then you'll want to put, uh, put your buyers with her. So, uh, thank you, Sean. Hey, Charlotte. How are you? Good to see you. All right, Felicia, what is going on with Rock Title? Good to have you Uh, good morning, guys. Just a couple of really quick announcements. Um, and you said 
the best, Shani, and we're all family. I mean, we we want to do. I'm here every day to try to help you guys with this. As much as we can. I mean, we we're here. Use us as a resource. Ask us questions. If you don't have an escrow, we're, we're it's okay. We we, we want to help you. We want to guide you guys through some of the things that are arising because we are seeing some interesting scenarios. But in, in hopes to build your business and find those clients, uh, open houses. That's what I'm doing every day. Is flyers. I've done so much flyer work for you guys. If you need a flyer, if you need help with an open house, if I'm available, I will be there to help you. Uh, I, but especially with the marketing, please remember that you guys can reach out to me and I can create your flyers for that. Open house packages as well. Anything that you're seeing different with? Um, for sure, sure, a lot of seller credits. Now sellers are aware that they gotta give up something. Um, they are giving um, closing costs. They're paying out for the home warranty. Um, What's the most you've seen in a seller credit for? Like any concession? 18,000, but I mean, obviously the higher purchase price, price was higher. But for sure, most of the um, escrows that are closing right now will say between six and 10. That's like an average. And if you don't and ask, you don't get it, right? Exactly. <clears throat> and then also keep in mind that us, Rock Title, we have plenty of discounts, so everything adds up, you know? Me particularly, I do my own signing, so I will be waiting also the notary fee. So, you know, here and there, it starts to add up and it helps every buyer, so that's always good to keep in mind. Please make sure you grab our info if you don't have our contact information and Eugenia's is out there as well. Uh, we had Breakthrough Broker Lab yesterday. Did anybody do the Zoom, the, the Rock University Zoom for Breakthrough Broker yesterday? Because instead of today at one, it was yesterday at two. So, it is recorded, don't forget, VIP access, Rock University, you can still grab that video, it was awesome. It was with the owner of Breakthrough Broker, Eric Sachs. Ooh. So that was really awesome. Um, I had one more announcement. Did you have um, Yeah. Uh, keep in mind that now we have the app as well for Rock Title um, tools. Oh, the so, Title Pro Box, yes. Um, that's really good because sometimes you guys need like property profiles, and if you go to the app, you can actually have it like right there and then. Sometimes you want to know like something that has been recorded against the property, so you can pull the documents yourself. So, I mean, that's a really good That just popped up, have. so. In case you guys needed the schedule, we're looking at the next one is going to be open house registration and QR codes. Did you guys know you had an open house registration QR code feature in your one suite? Does anyone know about that? Okay, it is awesome. I might have to do a little separate class and point some of these things out because open houses are huge right now. So, any you can always reach out to me, ask me individually, one on one, and we can go over that as well. I have another announcement. I don't know why it's skipping. Oh, CE. Anybody need CE? Okay, we do have a self-defense defense class CE that we're hosting and sponsoring at Green Valley Realty One on October 11th. Did you guys see that posted in the Google yes. Facebook group? Okay. Uh, yep, and it's 930 to 1230, so it's going to be sort of the start of the sales meeting, and then it's just going to flow to 1230. So that's there, that's on October 11th, and it's three hours, three credits. Who's so the instructor on that? That's um, Alexandra Nikolov. Oh, she's she's awesome. actually an agent with Realty One, or was an agent. Oh, she's not anymore. Okay. <laughs> she owns this company, and she's the CCW. She does an amazing job. Uh, she's a great yeah. instructor. Yeah, she's, she is. But she was an agent with Realty One, yeah. All right, any questions for us? Anything Eugenia and I can help you with? with this morning while we're here. Questions for escrow, marketing, nothing? You say Arizona time? Yeah, that's if the, that's when we fall back and they're an hour ahead, but we're on the same time, so we're good right now. Yeah, and so everybody knows about that, right? So we're gonna fall back, and then we're gonna spring forward next year, and then that's it. Oh, it is? Oh, wow. We're done. Oh, oh, I did no not more know Oh. Unless they've changed it. No. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're taking daily time to wait finally after all these decades. And just all over yeah. just Nevada. Nevada. Oh, I yeah, just know that. that. I just had people complaining about that. Yeah. Yep. So pretty cool. I'm excited about that. So you won't see that Arizona time anymore. But right now we're on the same time as Arizona. So. When, when we uh, I think no. it's November, it's November 13 yeah. or 8, somewhere around there. 
See, it used to always be in October, and so it throws me when it's in November, and then we're going to spring forward again, and it was late last month. Right around uh, Halloween, because yeah. we're just back yeah. the kids going yeah. for trick or treat. Yes. What yeah. are the online presents on? Oh, on, with Justin, on online presents. It's going to be on your social media tools. November 6th. Yeah. All right. Thanks, you guys. Have a All great right, week thanks. and a successful weekend with your open houses. Thank you. So we have a special guest here. Tony is here. Hi, guys. I know I'm not on there, but oh well. But I just want to also let you know that I have open house door hangers, and I have some in my car that you can put your card in, and you can actually write the address of the open house. So if you want to just walk the neighborhood and hang them on the doors. So they, I have a whole packet, like you're going to in my car if you need those. And I just want to remind you, like they just said, um, sellers are willing to pay for warranties. So now's a good time to write that in your offer. And our shield complete, I'd like to remind you that it is $775, but it covers unlimited refrigerant, $700 per appliance limit. And so with that saying, our number one item that is replaced the most often is does anybody have any idea what that might be? Dishwasher. Water Refri heater. No, refrigerator. <coughs> refrigerator is the number one. So that so that used to be three thousand, now it's up to seven. So that is a big, big deal. We paid twelve fifty for codes and modifications which would, would, would cover a water heating be, being repaired. Because we're always gonna bring it up to code. And they're always going to replace everything, straps, pan, because they want to make sure, the vendor, that everything is new and working so that they don't get sued. And everybody's worried, we were talking about that yesterday, and everybody's worried about being sued. And I was, we were in here yesterday with the, the new agent orientation and was saying every billboard from my house here is practically all attorneys. Because I live in Anthem, so every, I swear every billboard is an attorney. So, so here, here's where that conversation came up yeah. was, um, so when you're out there doing uh, listing presentations, taking listings, make sure that you're offering the home warranty or letting the sellers know that they can get a home warranty. Because if you don't, what could happen is there could be a major breakdown at the house and uh, the seller needs to pay for it. And the seller may be talking to a buddy and, and the buddy might say, well, didn't you get a home warranty? And um, the, the, the uh, seller can say, no, my agent never told me. So, uh, and it's happened in this scenario, the agent ended up suing the broker and, and or the seller ended up suing the broker and the, the agent and won. Wow. Um, so just to cover your asses, mm -hmm. just make sure that you uh, uh, offer or let them know that that home warranty At least is if you offer, advisable. Right, you're off the hook. Yep. Yeah. And you always want to put the seller's coverage on before an inspection. You can't get the inspection and then want to put on the, the seller's coverage. And it covers up to 2000 during the listing period. It, it just offset costs. It's not going <clears> to <throat> cover everything, but it helps so that the, the, the bite isn't so bad, so it's not so, you know, but just keep that in mind now that our sellers are being a little bit more open-minded, not all of them, but some of them are, are realizing that they're gonna have to make some concessions to sell their house. Mm -hmm. I was walking around my yard today going, why didn't I sell my house when it was <laughs> dumb, dumb girl. So um, I'm along with those sellers, a little, little slow, right, to the game. But anyway, thank you for all your support and you guys know where I'm at. If you need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks so much. All right, Emily. Let's talk stats. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Just running, just running. <laughs> you get me into the running. How many of you are following this every week? And how many of you are posting this every week? I think it's interesting to at least, you know, like if you post it on your social media, because then you can always look back week after week to see how the numbers are changing. So we're staying on the 10,000 now. I know. Is that like second, third week in a row? Two weeks ago was 10,016. Now yeah. it's 10,000. It's gone, gone up by 200 and uh, 20 something, 220. Yeah, so uh, the listings, I think, has kind of slowed down now. Yep. Um, the sellers were trying to catch the market, so a lot of um, 
them have listed in a couple months ago, two, three months ago. So we were seeing the, the numbers from 3,000 go up so quickly all the way to 8,000, 9,000. Now that we're on this mark, I feel like we're getting less listings these days. And then also the price decrease, we're about 50% have um, had a price decrease. However, I think that number actually should be higher, but what's happening is the agents are getting tricky now, and so they are taking it out of the market and then relisting it to reset the days on market, right? Oh. So really, and there's like, at least on my end, I'm trying to find out if we have a way to track that, but we don't so far that I know of. So I think that's been requested with core logic to see if there's a way for them to track that because we want to know like how many of these listings really um, you know, are getting priced down. And then uh, we have about 8,000 single family homes, days on market is 42, 4.3 months in inventory, and then that our median price. was 4.2 two weeks ago, so that's gone up a little bit. Yeah, and then median price uh, for single family residence is 499,500 as of this morning. So how many out there have buyers that they're working with or buyers that maybe they were working with and they say, you know, I think I'm going to hold off. I'm going to wait for the market to crash. Mm -hmm. a, lot, yeah, a lot of buyers not. think that we're going to have a market that crashes, the don't they? And what are you telling them? What are you telling uh, people when they ask you, what do you think the market is going to do over the next year or two years? Because a lot, the, the, a lot of consumers out there think that we are going to have a crash. A lot of them lived through you know, 2007, 8, 9, 10, where we did have a big crash. So what are we telling them? So I hope it does, so I can buy a house. <laughs> <laughs> just came out like last week is the equity in homes right now are the it, it reached the, on average is three hundred thousand dollars per home so that three yeah, there's more equity in homes now than ever in history so do you think we're gonna have foreclosures when they have three hundred thousand dollars or even yeah. even fifty or a hundred thousand dollars equity yeah. in their homes no no so that's what I'm telling people is that that uh, this is why you know my crystal ball, and it's not always right, but this is why I believe we're not going to have the big crash like we had because back then there was no equity in homes. People were buying homes for zero down, no qualifying. Yeah. What's that? It was all the mortgage fraud. Yeah, and they were buying. You know, some some buyers were buying four, five, six homes at a time with, with no, no money down and stated loans. And so uh, there, none of that has been going on um, as of late. So for those reasons, I don't think that we're going to have a big crash. Are we gonna have a, a little correction? Yeah, we're seeing a correction already, uh, but not the crash. Um, so that's, that's uh, I'll get off my soapbox now. I think it's a great time for buyers too who only has like three to five percent down because then if they don't have a ton of money in the bank you know for reserves or for closing costs or for a bigger down payment this is actually a really good time for them to buy because yeah. we've got the inventory and then you've got the sellers bending down and paying closing costs right now if they have several hundred thousands and they're willing to pay cash then some of those buyers okay they're gonna wait but then it's really hard to time the market whether it's stocks or housing yeah. it's just really difficult to time it and then just for FYI um, I reached out to Lenar yesterday and because uh, I have contact uh, with their internet consultant and then they um, you know I was asking them if they are giving uh, co-op for all of their homes and they said um, just on the MLS listed homes they have three percent and then one and a half broker co-op for Summerlin communities and then only three thousand dollars co-op at their adult community in Henderson whereas Pulte is like four or five percent you know? so yeah. just I want to let you guys know because I know some of the agents are saying oh you know I've got 
um, you know, a contract with Lennar, but note that those are just on their MLS listing. So if you were to bring somebody in Lennar, you know that they are not giving the full commission on most of them still, okay? So just, that's uh, yeah. And here, here's another, let's talk rates for uh, a second, uh, in that um, everybody knows the rates have gone up, right? They're still great, you know. Is six, they're under six percent, right? In the five still. Uh, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not. But even yes. now, six, six and a quarter is still a great rate. Down. His, yeah. his, historically, and here's what you can do. Here's what you can recommend to your buyers when writing an offer or doing a buyer um, consult. You can say, well, why don't we ask the seller? to pay for a buy down and buy down your interest rate so that the payments will be lower. What's the um, most points a buyer can do a buy down for? Half a percent, one percent? What's the most? I mean, it depends on the loan amount and the scenario. We can, adjust. We can see how much we need. One time I did uh, uh, seven months now. We use like 6,000, so it depends on the rate that they are going to qualify. So it's hard to give you a down. Yeah, but there's options out there. There's a lot of options. So, um, any questions on here? Here's so we post this into all of our social media, and, and Emily goes and, and gets this information every week. But we post it in the social media. It goes into our newsletter. Who knows that we get? You guys get a newsletter every Friday. Yeah. Newsletter. <laughs> 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 so, so we send out a newsletter every Friday, basically recapping the week and talking what's coming um, up ahead, and we put the stats in there. So you can grab these out of there and put them in your social media, so that you can look like the real estate expert to your. Um, all your friends on social media. So, um, and if you want to change, there's if you want to change up the way it looks. There's options in the creative design. The creative design. Um, and if you're not familiar with that, maybe we need to have another class on that. Yeah. Who's who's is it one I, I know. Or creator, or what is that? It's yeah. both. Yeah. I know you've been on there. Yeah. Who who's not familiar with what one this design is? This is on there. Like you go and click, and I can sign it. Oh, it's, it's, under, it's under digital. Oh, it's under digital. But then if you log into yours, you won't have these numbers because it's have online. Statue. Oh, okay. That's so if you want these specific numbers, then um, on the Facebook post, we okay. post it. Right. So if you want to make it your own and kind of change it up. So for instance, if you want to remove one of these, say the price decrease or the single family, whatever line you want to remove, and you want to put, say, um, median price on market, and you put 499500 there, you can change that. Okay. But you'll have to log into yours and then you can go to one design. Yeah, and then you can copy the rest of it if you want. So for those that you don't know, one design is an amazing tool that has just a, a, a lot of different templates in there to use for your digital or social media and for uh, your print marketing as well. So um, with that being said, let's welcome up uh, Muhammad Sultan, also known as Cutco Mo, and uh, Mo has been here a couple of times and always has a really good thing place of how to generate business um, off of referrals from your database. And if you know, I, you know your database is your key. I teach that in the uh, the Rev Up class on your database, and this is uh, one um, way of uh, tapping into your database. Good morning, Welcome. everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You guys get a great day when they let the knife guy come up and speak a little bit. Um, so I'm going to be up front and tell you I am horrible with clicking stuff. So we'll see how this goes. Try practicing over here. And I need more practice. So, anyways, uh, I just want to say good morning. Uh, it's great to see everyone here. Some of you guys know me as, as Mohammed, some of uh, Tomo. Um, but some of you guys, you know, it's the first time uh, meeting here, so I'm really excited to, to be here. And um, really, I'm really excited right now just to give you kind of this message about gifting that gets referrals and reviews, because it's really interesting, especially right now, you guys already know, uh, the market's changed. Uh, the market's way different than it was, um, even just a couple months ago. Um, we're finding that uh, this listings are a little harder to get right now, it's a little harder to get um, referrals, and just kind of get some of those deals to the finish line. Anyone agree? 
Yeah. yeah. And so um, it, the market's really changed you know, in good ways and bad ways. What's really cool as well is that the objective of this conversation is to um, basically just kind of help you guys through this really, uh, getting a really new, unique perspective on gifting and just creating like a, a new strategy for you guys to help you with your business. Um, by the way, this is coming from experience. We actually work uh, with about thousands of realtors across the country. I personally have about 300 agents just in the Las Vegas market. And what I did was we took our experiences, plus experiences of our top agents, agents that are doing anywhere from 50, 100, 200 deals a year. And uh, we, we found what works really well for them. And I just want to kind of share with you guys as well. Um, and if you guys take this framework, it should really be really simple to kind of uh, implement everything in place. First of all, I want to start with a story. Oh, it works. Um, so I want to start with a story. And uh, this is a story that a friend of mine uh, told me about uh, an experience when he was um, graduating from college. And I'm sure if any of you guys have ever been to college um, or have family members who have gone to college, kind of, you know, it's a really uh, big deal. And so he went out the uh, way to college and he was graduating and he had all of his friends and his family um, come up to, to see him. And uh, one of the people that he was really excited about seeing was his older brother. Um, now his older brother, he, uh, he hadn't seen his older brother in a little while. Uh, when he, he was younger, his older brother actually kind of got into a little bit of trouble, hanging out with the wrong crowd, and uh, he decided to actually kind of move away to, to start new and, and to kind of reset himself. And so actually, what's really interesting is that for, for uh, my friend, his older brother, he hadn't seen him in almost 10 years. And so he was really excited to see his family, but he was most excited to see his brother as well. And um, uh, so, during the day of graduation, you know, he went to all his friends and his family, and his brother came up to him with a gift. And uh, it was really interesting with the, with the gift. It was just it was a, in a little, really small silver box, and with silver wrapping paper on it. And what he did was he, you know, he opened it up, and uh, he saw that it had this really nice red velvet box inside. And so my friend was like, "Oh, I'm really excited. You know, this. I bet it's like a watch or something, you know, really cool inside." And uh, he opens it up, and he finds just a really simple. Uh, black pen, and uh, my friend was really confused, um, you know, because he's like, I don't think I don't get it, it's just pen, and uh, his, his brother came up and he kind of interjected and said, you know, I, I bet you're really confused right now, and I'm wondering why I got you this pen, and uh, the reason I got you this pen is because today's a really special day. Uh, today's a really important day because uh, moving forward, you know, now that, now that you're done with college, you're going to be signing a lot of documents, you're going to be getting buying cars, you're going to be getting houses. Um, someday you're probably going to get married, and you're going to sign your name a lot in the documents. And so, uh, what I want you to remember with this pen is that today you're officially a grown up. <laughs> and uh, you know, my friend told me the story, and he also told me because when you guys think about gifts, oh, when you guys graduate from college, and if you ever given a college student a gift, like what kind of gifts do, you, do they normally like recommend or like want? What are they hoping for, expecting, you know, and what, what kind of gifts are they looking for? Money. Car. 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 House. So, so, yeah, so car is great. House, that's, that's amazing. If you guys are need kids, I will join you. Um, go back to school. Uh, house, money, really, right? Um, and so, and those are great things, by the way. Um, but it's really interesting because with my friend he was talking about, because he got a lot of gift cards, he got some cash. And he was thinking back on that story, you know, he was telling me, he's like, hey, you know, I got a lot of, I got a lot of money um, during uh, my graduation, but honestly, I don't really remember where exactly I spent all the money, I don't remember who gave me how much, I don't really remember where all that went, um, but I do remember this, this pen, it's actually one of my most valued uh, prized possessions. <laughs> and when you guys think about it as well, the pen, it's not necessarily the gift that was important, right? It was the message behind the gift. And so one of the things we're going to talk about today is really just about how, you know, when you're, when you're sharing stories and you're giving out your gifts, it's, again, it's not about the gift itself, it's just how you present it to your clients and, and what you're doing and the whole process behind it as well, create a strategy. Um, so let's go to the next uh, slide in a sec. And what I'm going to talk about a little bit more so is going to be about um, four keys to gifting that gets results. Um, one other thing to think about as well, with our gifts, you know, we, guys have, we all have run this business, right? And so we all have different systems in place for our business. We have systems and we have strategies for our listing presentations, our buyer's guides, well, the whole process of everything, right? And a lot of times what I found uh, working with a lot of agents is that the closings, they always happen last minute and they're always unplanned. 
And sometimes you're, you're not even sure if you're even gonna get to the finish line. There's so much crazy stuff that happens that you're just like, man, I just hope we actually like get this done, right? And so what happens with a lot of gifts as well, it's kind of the same thing as well, where you're figuring out like, hey, I didn't even realize we were gonna get to closing. Now I don't even have a system, like I don't have a gift to actually give them. Now what do I do? And when we think about gifts, there's a couple different things that we wanna think about. First one's a four step uh, acronym. Uh, one's about timing. When to give your gifts. There's good times and bad times to give gifts uh, to, to your clients. Um, so the first one's about giving uh, when to give your gift. Second one's about what do you give to your clients. What to say. The message is super important. We just talked about that. And then the execution. And so, and the execution is just about you know how do you do it, who does it, when do you do it, and then and what kind of system do you have in, in place for that. So the first one is timing. So with timing, uh, when do we give gifts? The first thing I want to uh, talk about when we do is you want to avoid predictability uh, with your clients. You know it's the ABCs of gifting. Uh, we call that anniversaries, birthdays, and closings. Um, and I'm gonna shock you guys by telling you guys something, but the the worst time to give a gift. The worst time to give a gift, get, does anyone here know when's a bad time to give gifts? Especially for closings. <coughs> What's that? Before a closing? Yeah, I mean, you can do that if you want to give it to them early. Um, the, the worst time is actually the day of closing. Why is the day of closing a really bad time to give gifts? Because they're overwhelmed. There's so much going yeah. on. They're overwhelmed. They're, they're overwhelmed. You know, most buyers, um, they're really just excited to get their house, uh, like their keys. Their life's a mess because it's all in boxes, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and then you know sometimes they have like six screaming kids with them too, and then and then the husband, um, and uh, you know it's all about it's it's just it's just not they just it gets lost. You get this gift, they have to get a box, and then what happens is that they pack it in with all their other boxes, and it doesn't even get open for a couple weeks because they haven't figured out how to pack it themselves. Um, so that's it. So it's it's, it's chaos. Um, so giving a gift on closing days, actually, in my opinion, um, and from a lot of agents we have, is one of the worst times. You actually want to give your gifts out, if you can, you know, about 30 days later. Um, the second one, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit as well. The second one is, uh, is uh, telegraphing your gifts. Don't ask them what they want. You know, um, I, I call this the grandma clause. My mom, my grandma, uh, she's amazing and terrible at giving gifts at the same time. And the reason why is because anytime I have a birthday or anything coming up, she's asking, hey, what do you want? And there's nothing wrong with that, you know. Um, and because every time when we ask for things, you know, usually be like a video game, maybe a basketball, a new pair of shoes, nothing crazy or exciting like that. But you know, she'd always uh, get those, and I was always excited every single time I got them. But one of the, the most important parts about gifting is also the the um, surprise and delight. When you guys give a gift, you know, one of the best parts, in my opinion, you know, if you ever get something, is when you get to actually surprise someone, you get to see the, the delight in their face when they actually open it for the first time. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have ever experienced that before. Yeah. And so you don't want to ask your clients during closing, hey, I'm going to get you a gift, what do you want? Because that just ruins the entire experience right there. And the last one is plan spot and AD. And I'm going to talk about this a little, a little bit. Uh, but it's really just, you want to uh, gift when they least expect it. Um, and let me give you some examples. So, uh, one of the least expected is 30 days after closing. So that's, uh, that's one of my favorite times to give gifts. Um, and why should you wait 30 days after closing? And the reason why is just because um, when you guys finish a transaction with your clients, for them, a lot of times, especially if it's their first transaction, the transaction's over. They got their house, they got their money, they moved in. You know, technically they don't need it anymore. Um, but do you guys know that the end of a transaction is the end of the transaction. It's actually the beginning of a relationship with them because you want to make sure that you're their resource moving forward for all their future needs. And so, once they start settling into their home, they unpack all their boxes. They start getting back into their routines, and they're all you know they're all back settled into their life. It's a great time to reach out to them again, saying, "Hey, even though the transaction is over, I'm still here. I'm still here, and I want to be that resource for you. And I actually got you something too. So I'm just say thanks." Um, and so there's a couple different ways you can give them the gift after, uh, after closing. Um, one, you can drop it off at the house if you want to, just do a quick pop-by. Um, you can also mail it to them as well. Or just invite them into your office and just say, you know, uh, I actually have something for you, can you come into the office? And uh, so just uh, so I can give it to you. It makes it really easy. Um, 
And so that way, um, and then if you can time it that way as well, it just kind of helps give them, when you're giving them that gift, it also provides a little bit extra value to them as well. So 30 days post closing, non-gifting holidays. Um, and so when I talk about non-gifting holidays, you know, you think about the Christmas, birthdays, anniversaries, those are times when everyone expects to give. That's when they get so many other gifts from other people. And uh, I've always wanted to stand out from, from everyone else. And so it's nice to be able to give them something when they're least expecting it. So, um, and then also the last one to time it with opportunity to follow up. So if you send something out to someone, you know, just making sure that you follow up with them, just in case sometimes they might not reach out, they might get something and they just forget to call and say, hey, I got this. Just make sure that you follow up with them and say, hey, you know, did you get this? I sent you in the mail. I got a surprise for you. Or you can let them know, hey, I got a surprise for you. You know, keep an eye out for it in the next week or two. Get them really excited and curious. So plan spot and 80. So these are a couple uh, couple dates um, that we found uh, that work really well. And um, the first one, you know, we have uh, Halloween week, uh, Thanksgiving, New Year's, Valentine's Day, spring, 4th of July, August, or the fall. Now, I don't expect, uh, you shouldn't give your all your clients gifts all these dates, by the way. You know, it's, it's really expensive, right? Uh, but for your VIP clients, the ones that send you the most business, those are the ones that you want to definitely stay in touch with more often than others, and you can't just figure out when uh, in your calendar would this work for you. Um, and so, because those are the relationships that matter the most, you know, your top clients, your top, top 10% or so, maybe 15%, something like that. Um, and the reason we do this as well and not on those holidays is that's when everyone else gives their gifts. When you give a gift that everyone else does, you know, all the other gifts, those aren't the gifts that are going to be getting you the referrals and those business and the marketing and reviews and everything. So uh, the second thing, so let's kind of transition a little bit into what to give. Your gift um, is a, it's an artifact of the relationship. Meaning when they pick it up, <clears throat> what does your client feel? What do they think? Uh, what do they think about it? If you give someone like a like something that's really cheap um, or uh, low quality, you know they can tell that it's cheap or low quality, right? And so something that breaks down the road as well. You know when they think about it, what are they thinking when they when they use that gift? Uh, how long they have it? If it breaks, you know the last thing I want them to think about is me giving them this gift that they that it broke, and now they're thinking of me as it's going in the trash. You know. <laughs> That's like the worst thing you want to do, right? And so what we try to do is when you're giving out gifts, no matter what it is, you just want to make sure it's something that's high quality, long lasting, and also useful. That's really important too. And so uh, what we try to do is we try to uh, avoid small gifts, gift cards, technology, stuff like that. Not saying these are bad gifts, by the way, like I mentioned, you know, um, but these are things that get used up and forgotten about. I mean, when you think about a gift card, bottle of wine, um, champagne, all that stuff. Those are really great in the moment, right? But where are they two months, three months, four months later? Probably gone, right? Technology, getting a new iPhone every single year. Um, and so it's just one of those things that they're great in the moment, but just not something that's gonna stay long-term with your clients. Um, everybody gets gift cards, by the way. You know, you get them and you shove them in a box and then you forget about them. It's just like, what happened to it? And then the last one is uh, quality, lasting, and useful. So I'm gonna give you some examples of some stuff that we guys that we use. Um, by the way, you don't need to use our products. You know, we have there's so many different products out there that you guys can use. Um, that, and to be honest, we don't even need to use our own products. And that might sound really weird to say, but the reason we chose these products is because for us, it's just this has worked really well. Um, we chose specific products, by the way, um, for a couple of reasons. One, like like I mentioned before, being quality, lasting, and useful, but also something that's American-made. Um, you guys might not, uh, uh, some of you guys might not be like super excited about that. I know a lot of clients are as well. And so when we ever pick uh, products in general, we try to make something that's also um, those are the type of gifts that we will give out. So a couple of examples of some different uh, quality, useful gifts. Um, so Cutco knives, that one's pretty simple. Uh, it's a really popular one. We have insulator bottles, they're very similar to the, the, the Yeti bottles or Hyperclass. Um, and then we also have uh, Wilmy Beck cutting boards. And the Wilmy Beck cutting boards are cool. They have a really great story to them because they're handmade in the Appalachian Mountains um, by retired veterans and, um, and, uh, and they're American made as well. So there's a really great story behind it. And when you're giving out these gifts as well, you wanna make sure you tell them the story about those, those gifts because you give someone a cutting board, they probably have 20 cutting boards in their, their home. We tell them the story about how you know these are made by retired veterans. A portion of their sales go back to helping veterans with different services. For some people, that's really important. 
So just making sure that it's not just a GIF, but the story behind whatever you're giving them. Um, and then, I mean, I, obviously, you know, Cutco, we love Cutco. Um, that's our main product that we use. Anyone here have some? Cool, I got some work to do. Okay. <laughs> um, so really quick, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but basically, you know, the main thing why we like it a ton, it's American made, it's guaranteed forever. We brand it with your info on there, so it stays uh, with the client forever, and it's super useful. No matter what products you give to your clients, by the way, just make, just make sure that they're always useful, high quality, um, and long lasting. Uh, the next one's about messaging. Why are you giving the gift to your clients? What do you want them to take away or feel? And then what's the story behind it? <clears throat> and so uh, a couple other examples as well. Um, books. I love books. Anyone here like reading? A couple of you guys? No? Okay. We'll have to fix that too. Um, but uh, so books, they're, they're really, really great thank you gifts in general. Um, and these are a couple of books that, that impacted me uh, that I, I really enjoyed handing out. You guys kind of figure out, you know, I'm sure you guys have books that have, have affected your guys' lives. Um, those are always great to share with that story a little bit. Um, one of the ones I would talk about really quick is um, uh, the Grateful Journal, the Gratitude Journal. Um, it was something we gave out to our clients last year. Um, and you can get the Gr Gratitude Journal anywhere. You know, there's nothing really uh, special about that one over any other one. It costs like 20 bucks, nothing, nothing fancy. Um, but I did that to my top, uh, I think it was 25 clients. And what I also did with it as well is I included a letter. Um, and I mailed it to each one of them. Um, and the letter was really what made all the difference. And I'm going to read exactly what the letter says. Um, but it's, dear client, I want to send you something near and dear to my heart, and that is the gratitude journal. This is, uh, became really important in my life when I was uh, having a really tough time and one of my mentors asked me a really tough question which was, what are you grateful for? At the time I didn't really have like, a, a good answer for him, uh, but he challenged me and, really, and he asked me, like, hey, what are you grateful for? And uh, in a moment of really deep uh, and a dark time, I was able to find a couple things that I was, I was really grateful for in my life and it helped me change my attitude and how I execute my business moving forward that month and I ended up having a great month in the, in the rest of the year. I want to send you this because as an entrepreneur, things get really hard for you, and I wanted you to have something as a tool to help you get in the right state, help you run your business effectively, and every time you follow this journal, I hope you think about how much I am grateful for our friendship and our relationship. Sincerely, Cut Combo. Now, there's a couple of different ways you could have, I could have given that out to my clients. I could have just threw it on their desk with a little note saying, hey, I hope you enjoy this, right? Or I could have just sent them the book in the mail um, but the letter was really what I felt like made the impact for a lot of my clients. It was really interesting as well, the next several months, I had so many clients started using that journal and uh, they would text me photos of other things that they were grateful for. And it was really nice to have those conversations over the, the next um, six months to a year. And so, think about how, what kind of impact, when you give your gifts to your clients, what kind of impact is this gonna give uh, to them and to our relationship? Um, is it going to share any unique story? Uh, and then when you're also trying to figure out the, the gifts, just make sure if you, if you can, try to incorporate some sort of story um, of why this gift is important to you as well. Let them know um, why, why you chose it. Um, and then the other questions you want to just make sure is like, you know, what do you want them to feel when, when, they're, when they're using it? And um, I want to give you another example actually of these. And these are a couple of our other products that we've had. Uh, these are a couple of um, uh, mortgage guys that uh, we worked with. And um, the letters are really simple. Uh, basically, the first one uh, was with Kellen. He gave these out, uh, I believe it was uh, October for Halloween stuff. You know, he had like a trick or treat theme. He's like, hey, I want to treat you with some stuff. And uh, he's just like, hey, you know, dear client, I want to share my favorite things with my favorite people. This is my favorite knife that we use all the time around the house. It's also the best knife for carving pumpkins. And I hope this knife blesses you uh, and your family's holiday season. Uh, harvest season. The most important part, by the way, is at the bottom where it says, P.S., please shoot me a call or text so I know that it arrived safely. Because you want to make sure that they get it, but you also want to create that conversation after they receive uh, the, uh, the gift as well. Um, what was really interesting about this as well is because of those conversations that he, that he um, uh, had with his clients, he got five extra transactions that year. I'm not saying you guys are not automatically going to get that, but those transactions never would have happened if he didn't create something to create that conversation. 
And uh, the other one was with Shane. He did these for um, Thanksgiving. Uh, he just had some carving knives he sent out. And uh, his letter basically just says, you know, every year in November, I reflect on all the things I am grateful for. The one thing that stands out are the relationships, clients, business uh, partners, friends, and family. They say the quality of our life is determined by the quality of our relationships. As you carve out time for your most important relationships this holiday season, I hope you enjoy one of our favorite cut from knives we use this time of year. The right tool always makes the job easier. Let's grab some time together uh, soon. Happy holidays. And so it's just something a little bit different. You, you want to time it during the, uh, the month of November uh, for the month of thanks and, and all the people you're just grateful for. And again, you guys don't have to use our products. You guys can do anything you guys like, but here's just kind of like a base point of what, how to present it to your clients, what kind of message to send with them, and, and the story behind it as well. We just like them just because they're great. Um, the, uh, the next one, uh, these are a couple other products that we have. This one just talks about um, uh, the Lumi Bat boards. I mentioned them earlier. Um, and uh, you know, the main thing is just kind of sharing with them is that sharing the story behind them. They're handmade uh, in the Appalachian Mountains, um, retired veterans, and then that they, they, uh, they help with different services as well for um, with our military. Uh, and now just another Cutco spreader um, that they're talking about. But the most important part of these, like I mentioned, is really the bottom part where it says, make sure, please reach out to me and that you got them. Um, create that call to action a little bit so that there's some sort of um, action on their end to, 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 to talk to you guys. So that's the message thing. Um, so I want to talk about the gift script. So, um, so when you guys are, when you guys send out whatever gifts you're sending to your clients, um, what conversation do you want to have when they actually reach out to you, letting you know that they received it? Uh, in the gift script, this is basically just a, a main outline of the script. I'm actually going to uh, share a script that, uh, that we use and we share uh, with our agents. Uh, but basically, when you're giving the gift script, the four points to it is just like, hey, why are you giving them a gift? You know, why is it important? Why do you choose it? Talk about the future. You know your relationship with, with uh, your future relationship with them and what to expect moving forward. Talk about competition. Just let them know like here's other things that you might experience, and then just, and, you know, talk about referrals and reviews. Uh, so it's kind of super simple. So uh, Mark, I'm going to have you be my my uh, my partner here. Okay. Um, so Mark, you are going to be my gift recipient. Um, so I sent you a gift in the mail, uh, movie Hopefully. and. Um, you got some more going on. Play, yeah. um, and so basically all it is is uh, I'm gonna say ring ring hello and you're gonna say hey this is Mark Otero hey I got your your, uh, your gift in the mail um, and uh, just want to let you know that I really liked your time and uh, thanks so much. Do <laughs> <laughs> so, you remember that Mark? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. No, uh, well, I'm calling. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's good at following scripts. So yeah, so you're gonna call me as a gift recipient. I'm the gift third, and then yeah, just say hey. I was gonna let you know I got the gift. I really like the time. Who's calling who? Yeah. You're calling <laughs> me. Oh. Yeah. Ring, so ring. I, I sent you a cocktail knife in the mail. You got it. You're saying thank you. Oh. Ring ring. No, I'm I'm ringing. Ring. <laughs> so, he's gonna call me. You're calling me. Oh, you're calling me. Oh, you're calling oh, me. So, so ring ring. Hello. He's calling him. Hey, this is Mark. How you doing? Hey Mark, how's it going? Hi, I'm good. Hey, thanks. I just want to let you know, uh, know that I uh, got the gift and um, really dig it. It's really cool. I'm already using it. That's awesome. Um, I, that's great that you love it. Hey, I just wanted to touch base with you because um, it's been about 30 days yeah. um, since you moved in. Just curious, how's everything going with the house? Oh, we're still not completely moved in. We still have to, you know, hang the stuff on the walls. But uh, we're, we love the we love the new house. Great, that's awesome. Um, hey, I know you're still kind of moving in a little bit, but I was wondering, um, hopefully, do you have a couple minutes because I want to go over a few things with you? Sure, what you need? Cool. Hey, first of all, I just want to say thanks for choosing me as your realtor. Um, I know there's a dozen realtors out there you could have gone with, but you chose me, which is why I wanted to send you that Cutco night. By the way, do you have any Cutco of your own? Uh, no, this is my first. Oh, that's awesome, cool. Uh, well, hey, the reason I sent it is because I like to send you something that's quality, it's going to last a long time, and I can also be your realtor for life. So I want to send you something that you're going to have for a long time. And I had it branded just because if you ever need to get a hold of me, my info is easy to find. Um, so yeah, I just want to give you something of quality. Um, I know you just got this property. I hope you hopefully don't need to move anytime soon. 
Um, but I wanted you to know that not only do we specialize in buying properties, we also specialize in listings as well. So if, if you ever do need to sell or if you know anyone thinking of selling, I just want to let you know that you know, we, we can definitely specialize in that. Um, also, I want to let you know, um, moving forward, you know, if you guys, uh, if you're ever like, uh, um, because you moved in, you're probably going to get some like flyers and letters in the mail from other agents saying that they can list your home for top dollar or cheaper than other realtors. Already getting them. Already getting them. Yeah. <laughs> so I just want to let you know, if you are ever curious about the value of your home or just want more information on what's going on in your neighborhood, just let me know. Because I already helped you with this transaction, I already have a lot of your info on what's going on in your neighborhood. Um, I can get you some CMAs, which is basically just like an analysis of your home. Um, like such, so just because I already have that info, so I can make sure I can get you the most accurate and up-to-date information. Cool. Um, also, if you happen to come up with the name inherent, inheritance or a nice you know, bonus at work or anything like that, and uh, you want to start investing in real estate, uh, I just want to let you know that our team, uh, we have a huge list of off-market properties, and so I can definitely point you in the right direction if you are starting to look at um, uh, making those uh, future investments for, for yourself. Cool. Um, and then lastly, uh, I'm not sure if you started having family or guests over yet. I know you said that you haven't really started moving in, um, haven't finished with all the dust. But a lot of times when someone moves in, they start having conversations with people, uh, friends and family, thinking about the process, or considering moving as well. Just curious, have you had any conversations um, so far with any friends or family thinking about moving, or want to learn more about the whole process and experience? Yeah, not really yet. But, no? Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, no worries. If anyone ever does come up, you know, just want to let you know that um, the service that I gave to you is going to be the exact same service I gave to them. I'd love to um, keep uh, your family part of my family because um, we're all one family um, and, uh, and hopefully get them the same experience. Cool. Um, and then lastly, uh, I'm not sure if you saw the email that I sent, uh, but we're trying to grow our online presence on this website called Zillow. Um, I was wondering if you could take a quick, super quick two minute survey about our experience and just kind of share. Um, your feedback? Is that the LinkedIn email? Uh, yeah, I think that was the email. Okay. It should be the email sent to yeah. it. So I can send it again for you if yeah, you need to. I can do that. Cool. Um, anyways, it's all the uh, all things I want to go over. Just curious, um, was there anything else that you had any questions or comments or concerns about anything? No, I just want to thank you for the uh, you know the service that you've given me and, and finding us this this amazing house and of course the uh, the, the great room uh, as well. Cool. Um, well, I just wanted to let you know I love to work with you as well. I hope you're loving the house. I hope uh, I can be in the future a really trusted resource for you for any real estate needs. Um, and if you ever need anything, I'm just a phone call away. So um, you know, enjoy your week. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. And that's the gift script. All right. So, it's really simple. You know, Mark, just really quick, did that feel like super scripted at all or feel kind of like weird? No, nah, kind of no, not at all. You know, it was just a super, it's a really quick conversation with your clients. Yeah, just just really checking in with them a little bit. Um, <laughs> So, um, and that's that's one one way you can you can follow up with them. Um, so yeah, so the execution. You know, the last one is just figuring out. Hey, what's your plan? What do you say? Who uh, who does it? And then how can you leverage that to help with your marketing and any type of other um, systems you have going on in your business? Uh, to wrap up, basically, I want to just give you, you guys my info on there as well. Um, so this basically, I mean, we talked about earlier, this is what we do to specialize in. You know, our goal is to just help make sure we help you guys put systems in place for your business. You guys are amazing at selling um, real, uh, real estate. And, uh, you know, taking one last thing off your plate is, uh, is always really nice. You can spend a lot more time with your friends and family. Um, if any of you guys want to have any sort of conversations about uh, different gift systems um, or uh, anything else we have as well, um, you can just let me know. What I'm also going to do for you guys too, if you guys want to go ahead and text me your name and your email, if anyone's interested in getting our scripts um, that we have for this conversation with the gift script or uh, some of the email templates, so if you guys want to like create your own little thank you letters to your clients, um, or even just a list of like different various Popeye gifts um, or um, just like in, um, the schedule of holidays as well when they give gifts out. Um, if you guys just go ahead and just text your name and your email, um, and I'll get that to you in the next two days or so. Um, if anyone does want to get any extra information about our gift programs or if they want, or if they're looking to add to their collection as well, uh, if you text the word gifts as well, we can have a, um, we can start up a, like a quick 15, 10 minute, 15 uh, conversation uh, about what strategy you guys do and see how we can kind of help with uh, your conversation. But outside of that, I'm pretty much all done. Any questions at all from us? FYI, when you ask who, who has the cut coat eyes, myself and Emily raised our hands, and I love the knives. Yep. Um, and we have a, 
a full set at home. They're, they're the best knives ever. So yeah, I've had mine for like over 10 years, and I actually mm -hmm. used to give them to my high-end clients, you know, and I personally love mine. Yeah, so, yep. yeah and I still have it. Nice. All right. Yeah. If you text me, you're like good to do. Yeah. Remember, no matter how you slice greatness is a choice. Let's go out there and be great. Thank you. Thank you.